yesterday I just shared a little bit about my testimony and how I grew up in church and how Sundays were my least favorite days of the week. Um, I didn't grow up in a ministry family. It was just kind of like a Sunday, Wednesday type of family, church going. And just like he mentioned, like I knew about God, I could identify, like I heard the gospel and I could identify Jesus, but I didn't know him. I hadn't tasted and seen. And um, so I went through a lot. I went through a lot. I really struggled with condemnation. Uh, I had come to a point in my life where I had just accepted the fact that I was just made for hell. I was like, I'm just, I'm not going to make it. Like, I'm never going to see the pearly gates. I'm destined for hell. And I really, like, in my heart just was like, that. that's just it. Because I, I could never feel, I never felt good enough. I never, I just felt like it was so hard. There was no joy in it. I didn't know the person of Jesus Christ. And, um, we, we, um, years ago we held a really small women's conference. Like when we first started ministry, very small. I don't even know how many people you would say, maybe like 25 people came. And, um, Danielle Papavici, a uh, very good friends of ours, they're missionaries in Iraq, her her husband Dave and their kids. She was one of the speakers and another friend of ours, Carol Hubing. And um, I was just going through so much internally and I felt like such a fraud. And no one knew, you know, I just felt they don't really know this, the condition of my heart towards the Lord. And we had started ministry and it was just really ugly time in my heart and Danielle got up there and she was communicating things that I could feel and that I can I knew was true but I couldn't articulate myself and so the whole time during this little conference there was so much going on inside of me but you wouldn't you, you would never tell on the outside and then when it was over I got up really early to take Carol to the airport and before she got out of the car, she said to me, we got to steward what God is doing in our hearts. And she kissed me on the cheek, gave me a hug, and got out of the car. And I just started driving. And I really started to think about the words she was saying. And I just started to talk to the Lord. And I just started to tell him, okay, so I used to make cakes for just some cash on the side, like fondant cakes, you know, like, that whole thing. Well, what people didn't know is that I used boxed cake mix because it was easy and it was good. And I didn't realize, I'm not a baker. I just was like, I tried to make a cake. Someone thought it was cute. And they're like, well, you make me one. And it turned into this whole thing. <laughs> but I literally started talking to the Lord and I was just like, God, I'm, I'm a fraud. Like, I'm boxed cake mix. <laughs> like, I'm not organic, real ingredients. Like, I just was telling him, I feel like such a fake. Like, on the outside, I, you know, we're, we look like this perfect little ministry family, and I have all this pretty fondant, and nothing, nothing looks like it could be artificial. But I'm so fake. Like, I'm just fake, and people think that I'm real. And I just started to tell him what he already knew and I started to cry and it was like a normal like healthy cry like some tears you know and then it like as I started to allow him to come in into my heart as I just confessed all of this stuff and all of this doubt that I had and unbelief I started to like wail giving birth crying, driving down a highway by myself. I could not see. I was like, should I pull over? I'm probably going to die. Like, I didn't know. I had no control over what was happening. I was, like, literally like, pushing. Like, women you, who's given birth, you know what I'm talking about. And I'm, like, crying, screaming in the car. And I'm like, I, I, didn't, I didn't even know what was happening. So I pull in to the driveway. I sit for a while because I'm like, Eric's going to be like, what the heck happened to you? Anyways, long story short, I was supposed to be really busy that day, and it ended up that I was alone in the house 
which never happens. My kids were little at that time. And the whole day, I just, I cried. And I felt like some, someone had died. Like, I felt like I was mourning. And I thought, what is wrong with me? Like, am I depressed? What is going on? I was listening to Jason Upton, the, uh, that Bethel album, what is it called? The uh, Loft Sessions. Do you remember that one? It had just came out. So whenever I hear any of those songs, it just is like, forget about it. And I'm like, I have those on repeat. And the Lord, it's funny, the Lord put this on my heart to tell because years ago when we were dating, there were two people that had spoken things over me. And I did not realize how deep it cut me. And really set the tone for our marriage because I had so much resentment towards him and I didn't even realize it was birthed out of what those people said about me that I started to believe. And the Lord showed me their faces in the room and he says, I want you to forgive them. And I hadn't thought about them or what they had said and I don't know how long, but because it hurt, you know? And so I, I said out loud their names and that I forgive them. And I can't tell you, <laughs> I can't tell you, like, I, the next day when I woke up, well, first of all, you came home and he had no idea what was going on that day, like what had happened to me. I hadn't talked to him about it. And he walked in and he looked at me like I had, I don't like my face was painted green or something. And he was like, and I was like, hey. And he's like, what happened to you? And he's like, your eyes are like glowing. And I was like, what? Anyways, the Lord literally raised me from the dead that day. And I woke up the next day and I was like, this, the sky was bluer, the grass was greener. I felt brand new. I felt light. I felt free. And that was the beginning of the realization that, first of all, unforgiveness will kill you. You said it perfectly when you said it, it chokes it, it prevents the life of God from coming into you. You cannot harbor unforgiveness. You cannot. It's death. And I didn't realize the root of it until I allowed God to show me. It doesn't matter what they did to you. It doesn't matter what they said to you. God can completely... It's. He won't make it so like you won't remember and it never happened, but he will literally remove the sting of it to where I can think of it and there's no pain there. It still happened, but he will remove the sting of it. So I just want to encourage you. I know he talked about it already, but just if you're harboring unforgiveness, you have to forgive and you have to let it go and you have to let God fill all those spaces. But anyways, um, yeah, God is, God is, Jesus is real, and uh, he's, good. he's not just good, uh, he's amazing, and uh, I encourage you to turn your, all of your innards towards him. So good,